Hello and welcome to another episode of To Be Honest, a show with a clown, a nerd, a duck, and a degenerate. So we've got several things to talk about today. Nerd has just released his latest Sniper Wolf video. Well, it's really more a video about narcissism, um, but using the Sniper Wolf story as a kind of way into that yeah it's a bit a little bit of a sneak attack because uh you know you need the you need the recognizable thing that uh you talked about before that people would recognize like sniper wolf you know but then really what the video goes into i think for about 60 70 percent of it is narcissism which i think is something that once you once you get a, a handle on how that works that mental model It'll, it kind of works like a, a cheat guide for dealing with people who you have in your life. <clears throat> Oftentimes it'll be a boss or it'll be, you know, so, someone who, usually someone who's successful, you know, like, because it's basically the people who want to be the leaders, the people who want to be the center of attention. Oftentimes they're narcissists, you know, yeah. not always, but. Does it explain a lot of big TikTokers? <laughs> Like watching through your videos, like oh yeah, those traits, those traits are very reoccurring. And I mean, it's, just, it's an epidemic now, right? YouTubers. Like so many people, because social media is more available than ever. Like, like you get these people that just become famous overnight. So it's like some of the therapists or whoever that you referred to in that video. Like they're even they're saying it's just an epidemic of people that want to be famous. So there's just so many, so many narcissists now. I want to be famous, me, 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 me. Yeah, to succeed on social media, you almost have to take on narcissistic behavior. So wh if you do it in bursts just for social media, you still are being narcissistic, you know, making yourself the center of things and and um, acting uh, like basically a grandiose narcissist, like undefeatable, I can't be beaten, I always win. You know, like that's what succeeds on the internet. The, the blaming as well, like when something goes wrong, it cannot ever be your fault. What One thing that I found really interesting in your video and you broke down, because when you imagine a narcissist, you imagine someone that looks into a mirror and they just, they're in fucking love with themselves, right? Like, you know, the whole, the, the Greek narcissist. thing, whatever it narcissist. was. Like, narcissist. Yeah, like someone looking into a pool of water and like seeing their own reflection. But then why do narcissists tend to mimic other people's behavior? But yeah, you went into that into great detail as well, because that's a pretty easy misconception like someone that's obsessed with themselves why would they then obsess over over other people yeah it seems almost a paradox obviously they're in love with themselves but also they hate themselves at the same time so those two concepts appear to be in conflict with each other but of course they're very much related yeah it's hard to wrap your head around it's but once you understand this true self false self structure like that's one way to visualize it obviously one of the things that bothers me about this is none of this is a hard science it's almost, it almost reminds you of like astrology in a way where it's like, this is just looking for patterns that don't exist and then acting like it's science. Now, that bugs me a little bit. But the fact is, th some of these patterns are so, you know, like when, when you hear them and they hit right, you know, like, like nar these th theories about narcissism really ring true. It really resonate for me. You know, it made me, uh, basically made me, reprocess a lot of memories that I had and experiences I'd been through things that that didn't quite make sense and relationships that um, you know I've been puzzling over and understanding narcissism helped me really figure those out for the first time so I like I did a lot of work psychologically studying this were you concerned uh, talking about a huge topic like narcissism when you had seen Shane Dawson's videos on sociopathy and how that had failed miserably, at least in the eyes of the viewers, uh, in terms of like, he was way out of his depth. Yes. He was speaking to the wrong people and basically he was talking out of his ass. Yes. And I think that the way that that was mishandled and the way that the response to that caught so much traction uh, that that put a that had a chilling effect on people ever talking about mental health in that way again it's almost made it's made people scared to do this which is not a bad thing by the way i don't necessarily think that's a terrible thing for people not to jump into like talking about significant topics like that haphazardly 
Yeah, it shouldn't be haphazard, but you also shouldn't be scared to look into it and to speak about it without giving a million, um, you know, without giving a million disclaimers about how you're not this and that, you know, I think that's, I think that's being overdone and people are too scared of it because, because what I, the way that I see people treating mental health now, and especially post that Shane Dawson blowback is it just reminds me of, um, what we learned from history about the priests and the Bible in Latin, how there ends up, you know, it's like this gatekeeping that happens over sacred texts and only, only the priests are allowed to under like read the Bible and then tell it to the people. And so you have basically their customers, you know, the church and you have this, this class, this priesthood gatekeeping the, uh, the knowledge of the Bible. You know, and all of that obviously since then was was undone by translations and the printing press. And there's no reason why the average person can't read, you know, these texts. That that was just to basically protect the product of church services and the expertise of uh, of priesthoods and religious scholars. You know, that was very convenient to them. And I see a similar thing happening in mental health where you basically have the pay pigs of therapists and the therapist class protecting this uh their livelihood and saying like no one is qualified to speak about this uh unless they are a licensed therapist you don't want people to get out of their depth and talk about something that isn't their specialty and spread misinformation like i I get that and it's easy to do in something as difficult as um you know like let's say uh, micro, uh, no, what was the, what was the thing recently with the pandemic? It's easy to get out of your depth when talking about things like, um, immunology. You know, if you don't understand the terms, you don't have a background in that you could, you read a paper on Google scholar and you're not going to, the average person is not going to grasp, grasp what it's trying to communicate. So on one hand, you don't want that. But then on the other hand, if there is Uh, truth to the findings of psychological research then the more that people know that the better the less victims easy you know uh, pickings out there there will be for uh, psychopaths and exploitative people you know you want people to understand the signs and the red flags of someone who's dangerous and so if you gatekeep talking about it you make everybody afraid to talk about it you basically have rubes out there so I, th- I think I think this stuff should be talked about more because if it's useful, then let's let's make sure that more people can use it. It's also interesting as well, and especially when you're talking about it on YouTube, because there are so many social media influencers and YouTubers and TikTokers out there that would probably be narcissists themselves. I think it's an easy job that narcissists would congregate to as well because you are doing content creation you are putting yourself out there are you getting positive feedback and reinforcement all the time it's an interesting line though because with i feel that everyone copies everyone to an extent right like you are who you are because of everyone but narcissists will go to that extra length (laughs) of copy and paste completely like like if if jay says like a buzzword or something i'll probably start saying it Uh, probably definitely All right, don't <laughs> don't give yourself don't give yourself too much credit, <laughs> buddy. But Every you know, bit. like like in a <laughs> in a, in a friend group, if there's a bit like it will get shared around. But yeah, like they will dress like them, walk like them, like talk like them. Like they are basically just an asymmetrical. Well, symmetrical. Well, no, a- asymmetrical because because the, they're not perfect. I was watching Nerd's video and I saw the Luke AFK guy. And I was like, oh, fuck, I gotta change my hairstyle now, man. No <laughs> well, he, he had like a shaved reverse haircut, though. Like, people are saying they like my hairstyle now, and this is like, I, don't I haven't think done anything anyone's with it. It's saying just that. in my head like a. It, no, I'm, I'm the super. People were just like shitting on it, regardless. Yeah. You could get like the, you could get like the most normal haircut. You don't dye it, and they'll still just be like, "Man, his hairline fell it off." It literally looks like <laughs> a dead rat on my head at the minute, and everyone's like, "Yeah, it looks, it looks better." You should probably just shave the whole thing off and see what people say. Just go bold. I mean, I have no jawline. I'd actually <laughs> be beard. baby mode. You could probably grow That'd a beard. That'd be horrible. Just go Keemstar mode. <laughs> Even though I've got like a healthy head of hair, I just go bald. We give Pyro a lot of shit on this show, but um, he Deserves when it. Pyro posts a <laughs> selfie on Twitter, 
it, you know, which he doesn't do every day, he does every once in a while, it gets 20,000 likes. Like Pyro is good at putting his finger on the pulse of what his audience thinks is funny and will share and likes, you know, like I, I mean, you, I mean, that's, I would that not, credit. I would not congratulate myself for that. That's called <laughs> running a gimmick account. No, it's not. What do you mean? Is this a, you right. have a I mean, you have you get, successful social media accounts. You get YouTubers. I feel that you get two kinds of people on Twitter. You get people that overshare and talk about all their personal life and stuff, and then you get people that just post memes and try and stay away from Twitter as much as possible. Dress up as a woman. Uh, like yeah, dressing up as a woman. I mean, like we we give you shit about that, but people like that you do that. They think it's uh, they think it's funny. Funny. Why did you dress up as a woman recently? Like why? His coat will be. Engagement. His coat will be. I get likes. That's it. That's the coat. What he said was a lie, but it was for engagement, but not in the snide <laughs> way that he said it. He said it in a very snide way. But I'd be like yeah, dressing no, up I, for I a woman I, the twentieth time. Yeah, it's for when, likes, guys. When I did it, people actually because I I I've done it before, but I haven't done it in years, and that's the first time I did it in a while. And then obviously, I guess I like, knew people that have watched me. are just like, oh, he's trans now, which is not. <laughs> the oh case. yeah, some I, Twitter I have, people. I have Sorry. to put it out there. I'm not fucking trans. I remember like uh Yes, you I are. Fi- I, oh, I'm definitely not. I'm, <laughs> I, I had Finster. Twitter uh, thinks uh, you'll cut me out like Finster. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, like I'll... What I'll did I say like in the last Finster, episode that Dolan st- stopped me on? I said like whenever Pyro's being particularly trans and Dolan goes, what's that? When he's being particularly trans? <laughs> and then Pyro... <laughs> and then Pyro just was particularly trans. <laughs> trans moment. Yeah, no, it literally is for engagement. I, I mean, that does sound like a cope. I will admit it's a cope. But like, if you look at the the likes that that tweet got, I think it's on like 40k or something. And then yeah. when I posted uh, me dressed up for like a main channel video as the Darkwoods character, like in a, you know, in a trench coat, scarf on, got like a little scarecrow hat on in like the woods. That got like a quarter of the interaction. That's what they were saying because like Finster got big dressing up as a woman and was always like, "No, I just like dressing up as a woman." Nah, and then F- Finster was two always years taking, later. Like, he's taking HRT and actually- Finster was always taking estrogen on the sides. I'm getting a lot uh, of shit. Like I knew, I knew that putting Jordan Peterson in the video at all was going to yeah. was going to get people to tell me that I shouldn't be showing him. Um, but I get, so like controversial characters, whether they're associated with right leaning or left leaning political ideologies, what I don't like is that even though they're relevant, even though what they're saying is not something that people are going to refute, it's like, you can't argue against the point they're making. They don't want you to show them on screen. They think that showing them on screen because they don't like them, it's, is going to make more, that it is irresponsible somehow. It's like, this is a dangerous person. I don't not not that I don't agree with these people potentially being dangerous or whatever. It's like I don't agree with this idea that you can't expose people to someone or a topic that is dangerous because that's your like I'm making entire videos about someone who I think is dangerous, right? One of the things I guess that you just got to ignore is that people will watch your video but because you included this what it was it like 20 seconds of Jordan Peterson, they just write yeah. the whole thing off. They'll be like He's just a hack using Peterson. To he, he's push the guy his I see. He's like, the guy I see cry on TikTok <laughs> with auto tune. Yeah, you know, yeah I don't. I don't I like guess that. It's just something att- you gotta deal with. Like people will write it off because you included someone that they don't like. But well, because what, what they're trying to do, like, what is the point of that message? And we also we also get similar things that happen on Twitter when basically like a friend of ours is is having a controversy. People will uh, ping us and DM us and whatever and start telling us to unfollow them. They try to pressure us to join in on this this mob that's happening. For right or wrong reasons, the person's in trouble. You know, the mob that's angry will try to basically police um, us or people who know them into turning our back on them. I don't like that and I never go along with that. It's like, I don't like the pressure on someone to di- to dissociate from somebody, you know. Yeah, but there's also something called loyalty and something called innocent until proven guilty, and also mm-hmm. a follow is not an endorsement. Yeah, there could be a myriad of different reasons why you're following someone on Twitter. Uh, Twitter, yeah. Twitter doesn't actually know any of those phrases. Oh yeah, they don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, and and like Hassan Piker, personally, Hassan ideologically, Piker. like I don't, I don't, I don't I'm align with Canadian. with communism. You know, I'll, I'll come out and say that I, I don't I don't think communism is the right way. And, you know, whether it's socialism or communism or Marxism, any brand of that collectivism, I, I don't like that. 
but I'll show Hassan Piker on screen when he's making a point. When it fits into a montage that is trying to show, there's a, there's a cultural movement of people saying this same thing. Let me show you all of these influencers who are saying this point. And then I'm either going to back that up or refute it, or I'm just going to show you that this is what's been happening. I'll show Hassan Piker. I'll show Sam Hyde. I'll show people on either side of, you know, of a rivalry of a political spectrum. There's no one who I think is too dangerous to even let you know that they exist. It's like, I'll, I'll follow and be aware of people who I think are dangerous. Hassan Piker is also capable of like, I think, I think if making, having an opinion that you would agree with, and therefore you're sharing that same opinion. Yeah. Probably not even his real opinion because he's a fucking grifter, but <laughs> it's possible that he made it. I don't watch him, so I can't form much of an opinion, to be fair. Very brave statement. But I saw this one clip with Hassan of, uh, he's, I think he's streaming in Australia right now. And uh, mm -hmm. one of his fans ran up to him and said, like, stop drinking coke on your that. stream. You're like supporting genocide. <laughs> yeah. And the, the way he shrugs it off is like, oh, I'll okay. put it in the glass. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, uh, to be fair, what could he do in that situation, though? Oh, it, but when you cultivate a fan base yeah. like that, it's, oh, uh, whoops. Throw the coke in her face, see what would happen. He just pivots. Yeah. He's like, wait, this is my fan base? Time to go right wing. I mean, it would be fair <laughs> enough, to be honest. I mean, like, there's the redemption arc right there. Do you think um anyone or even any of our, like, mutual YouTubers that we know watch Nerd's video and we're like, wait a minute. That's me. Like, they're like, wait, these are my traits. Like, I wonder if anyone watched your video and was like, wait, am I a narcissist now? I was a little bit worried that when I watched it, I fell into a narcissist because I thought like, you know, holy shit. Like when, when, when Jay has a bit, I steal it. But then I thought, <laughs> but, 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 then, but then it ends there. Like yeah, this, but you're not, co you're not covering it up. And I mean, you are, but you're not like covering it up covering it oh, no, up. No, I'll, like, I'll just I'll just say no I made the bit first then you'll instantly yeah, prove me wrong in yeah. chat history and it's like ah uh, Neil. <laughs> yeah that's one of the things I found crazy about the video I mean Sniper Wolf's always known for it but every time you had a, a point nerd you had a bloody sound bite to match because <laughs> Sniper Wolf, had Sniper Wolf had clearly gone down like you know, she'd looked up what narcissism was. She seemed to know like everything about it. So you had a sound bite and it was like she, what was it? What is it like? You know, she's she knows what it is. She probably knows that she is one, and then she just projects it onto everybody else, which is another yeah. common trope. Where do you where do you see the psychopathy pieces? So this was one half of the the uh, basically the video, and I just cut it in two in order to get something out, and to um, in order and also because I think the two pieces can work on their own. If if both of them came out, you would be so overloaded with holy shit. Um, so I handled, this is the soft part, <laughs> the narcissism. Wait, is there more to come or is oh, the first oh, yes. part the one yeah. you just did? Oh, wow. The Snow psycho, the psycho the section goes is, deep. is bad. So I just, I just handled the, the fun light, uh, the narcissism part, the other half of malignant narcissism, the malignant part, the psychopathy is, I don't think people are going to believe what's included in that. It's crazy. It's talking about the footage, um, things that she's put out there and what she is or isn't self-aware about. It's crazy the things that she says. Like, I, I think she's lost track of what she's said and how incriminating some of it is. What a lot of these people do is they're accused of something like, oh, you're a narcissist, you're a psychopath, you're stealing people's content, you're a plagiarist. They receive that criticism, it obviously affects them. And so what they do is they preemptively try and stop any further criticism on that subject by a targeting someone else and accusing them of that same exact thing or b be self-aware about it and i think that that is something that sniper wolf leah has done for the last like six years constantly yeah she has a remarkable strategy for trying to manage her reputation with um with putting out something basically you know we've we've talked about this before on this program i think the way that she uh she and evan were trying to stuff google search results with uh their own videos about the thing that she was accused of doing wrong um but where she was just talking about it right so she gets accused of photoshop fails 
makes a video called Photoshop fails where she talks about other people's fails or whatever, you know, like she'll, she'll title a video, the thing that she's done wrong. And recently she started doing that with Darman collabs That's where right. her collaboration with Darman is called something like, um, gamer girl gets bullied or whatever like where she's stuffing the fact that she's accused of bullying that she's a fake gamer um and she you know the whole topic of the of the video the title of the video the fact that she's watching it on her channel and it's on darman's she's trying to get the the top two um places in the search results for things like bullying and fake gamer girl things like that but well what i think hasn't been discovered yet that i've noticed is she uses this channel called um called something like my animated story time where users can submit basically like little stories to some website and then they'll be animated in a cheap flash way she does things uh where she reacts to these little animated vignettes that i think all, i think probably all of those videos are covering up something that she's worried about so she, because she'll have it the video would be called something like i stole my sister's girlfriend <laughs> or uh, my my sister is my sister is jealous of me being a famous youtuber something like that and it's like well this is extremely yeah, sad. <laughs> all those video this, titles are just an autobiography if you scroll through them you get the whole i think they life. might be yeah and I, i'm not i'm not going to go into the like i'm, I'm not going to be a private investigator and look into all of these personal issues with her I'm, re I'm really not trying to pry into personal family details but i do think that the uh that animated series is a big tell on things she's trying to cover up in her in her personal life in in that darman video was she the one who was under fire or was she the one that kind of saves the day for, for she's the, the savior yeah she comes that's in right. and she comes yeah, that, in and that, it's crazy that's really that's really bizarre like not even it's almost like there isn't a hint of self-awareness like if she was the character that was being bullied you know like like imagine if she even did like a referential bit like that uh you mentioned that she was in a Fortnite tourney and literally got knocked out in like the first round. You know, like imagine if she was playing bad at video games and then, you know, some other character came and like boosted her confidence or something like that would make a bit more sense and almost like a bit of self-awareness. Not just her like this. She couldn't admit to being bad. Yeah, just not this fucking guardian angel just descending down. I'm going to save you. Yeah, I'm she and face filters. She and the girl uh, pay the rent of her hater. It's crazy. This is not something so that Sniper Wolf would ever do. Some of the things you mentioned, uh, like, like what Jay said earlier, it's really good. And I imagine that was the most time-consuming bit of the video. Whenever you made a point to then show her basically making that point a reality, you know, whenever she'd... Like, for example, uh, how much she vented, like, personal drama to a kid audience, like, saying how, you know, she was going to, like, beat someone off or something like that in one of the videos. Like, like, no, she, she admitted to, like, a fantasy of wanting yeah. to fight someone. Violent like, I'm pretty sure ideations. It, yeah, yeah, like, putting that out there to your audience, it's like, come on. It's, yeah, it's man, like she's that's... using an, she's using the channel, which has an average age of probably, like, nine, as, like... <laughs> Negative four. Negative... <laughs> <laughs> they're in the womb it's like group therapy but she's just talking to a camera so yeah she knew she shouldn't have said that 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 piece so i go into that more in the second part because that's the violent psychopath part but she was taking a personality test and midway through the test she runs into some question about like you know do you have violent thoughts or something and she pauses and she's like you know i do I do. I, she's like, I don't do this as much because I'm happier now. And sausage has helped to calm me down, which I guess, you know, look out world sausage is gone. But she's like, I used to, whenever someone would make me mad, I would have thoughts about beating them up or killing them. And I would feel <laughs> so good. And then she like, and then, and she basically admits it's that it's like a, a sexual thing because she goes, it, it gets me going. And then she makes a joke about, oh. <laughs> maybe we should stop this video now. Like, they're like that she's too horny to continue or something. It's very I, I want it to be. I want it to be devil's advocate and say, like, people do have dark fantasies about, like, you know, like, like, like it's one thing that's explained in therapy. What are your dark fantasies, Pyro? We don't want to know them. Uh, I'm kind of interested. <laughs> Fat farting animals have been over His this. His actual dark fantasy is a skinny woman of normal build. <laughs> His biggest shame. I have started to joke about like when someone pisses me off, like where I, where I feel like the 
where they are so far off and so far gone in what they're saying that I can't even like, it will take so long to, to basically like break down what they're saying and to prove them wrong. You know, they're like eight steps past <laughs> the start of where they went wrong, where I just picture, I'll joke about picturing like hitting them with a drone strike. And when I saw that sniper wolf clip, I was like, I guess I'm kind of doing that. You know, it's not like imagining the the gore of some sort of in-person murder like I think she's talking about. But I guess I do. I have sometimes imagined just boom, blowing up their house. Yeah, the end, you're a psychopath. You know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, it's 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 normal in like therapy and stuff or like meditating. You know, you kind of have these dark thoughts and shit about like you know like uh getting revenge on someone or hurting someone like, like stuff like that is like unfortunately part of the brain it is normal but it does you know come and it does go but yeah with sniper wolf like, like someone being that rent free in her head that she's like promoting it in a video you know and, and like you said there might even be like a, a sexual aspect to it as well it's just so fucking bizarre so colossal when we worked on j station it was a thousand videos and what did we estimate it was something like 30 days if you watched it straight through sniper wolf is more than three times more that more than that through over 3,000 videos and that's not even counting all how prolific she is on social on other social media sites which i'm not even talking about and i will say this for jay station at least some of his videos definitely not all but some were kind of entertaining fun to watch his slave video was genius. <laughs> like, I genuinely laughed out loud watching yeah. that video because it was so is that, unhinged. Is that a good sentence to just say? just total lack of self-awareness. I, I feel that's Why? quite a bad sentence to say out loud. Yeah. The slave video was genius. It was funny. It was funny because it's just I think total lack of self-awareness. made fun of him, kind of. Not, we're, definitely not we're laughing together. We're making fun of you. Like, like I remember, you know, when... Or, no, it was funny. All the commentary channels funny. were doing videos on, uh, you know, when he faked the death of his girlfriend, and like it, he definitely did not do this intentionally because he's not clever enough to. But there's like a like a sarcophagus, yeah. an Egyptian sarcophagus, sat behind him when he's talking about the death of his girlfriend. It's just stuff like that that was just so poorly timed. It's actually funny. The thing with J Station, I remember Klaus and I talking about, is that there were times where J Station would be trying. Because what he was trying to do was court controversy. He was trying to get people to talk about him doing something bad. He admitted this. And the slave thing he knew was crossing a line. It was being edgy. So there were some times where he would be doing something like that, where it was so edgy that he like made a based comedy skit. You know, I, I, I found it. It's just the, it's just the suck. Sorry to cut you off. Just the sarcophagus behind him when he's talking about his girlfriend dying. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. So you see, so when you guys saw that, did you, you were talking about thinking about some of our peers that are probably narcissists. What about like prior to YouTube, which I guess with Pyro would be almost none of his life because he started YouTube so early. But for me, I thought of a lot of, just I had, I thought of a lot of like relationships yeah, and, you know, teammates, uh, teachers, family members just like it made me reprocess a lot of things and think about okay i've seen this behavior before i know someone who has this yeah same i mean i could definitely identify people i know in real life that would be narcissists but i did study psychology so i probably did it made this connection all these connections you know a bit before you i think it's i think it's really helpful to to know how that works because it is such a common um it's such a common set of behaviors, not the copying that I think is kind of rare. You know, I, I've seen that a little bit, but you know, I don't think that's as common, but the, the projection, you know, I think surely all of us know quite a few people who, when something goes wrong, instead of them being able to see, okay, I had some part of this, you know, this is part my fault, part someone else's fault. They go, this is all someone else's fault. You know, they stub their toe, they step on a piece of Lego and they're like, who left this out? <laughs> it's like, you did. <laughs> yeah, you, know? you, you made a point of that. And I like how in the video to demonstrate Sniper Wolf constantly shifting blame, you shown her being knocked out of the tournament. It, was it Fortnite? Just the fact that she, she got knocked out the first round and you had this whole like, you had this whole bit of like her, you know, growing to like a, you know, green giant size and stuff but but it's so funny because that was just a tournament which she literally got knocked out of in the 
in the first round. Oh, yeah. And you, you probably tournament, though. you probably put more effort into that sketch than she did in the tournament because she literally got bodied and appeared at the bottom. I'm surprised she didn't blame it to seconds. her teammate unless she did. For that. I couldn't find I, anything no, 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 about that. Because the yeah. nerd's shown a clip. I don't think it was the same event, but like it's her playing Destiny and she's just molding. Like you know, I was screaming at my team. They they weren't doing well. You know, again, just that. It is like, most everyone, gamers. Oh the, yeah, um, everyone blames everyone else, the right? It's like head of Tekken said that people like the team games, the younger kids, because they have someone to blame when they lose. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm. Like. <laughs> This is this lot just this last week. If you think about uh, the gaming rage trend, like like there are compilations of people raging out when they lose in a video game. That's something that the yeah, audience used, is kind of like. I used like. to do that. <laughs> you know, they they like this re this overreaction to video games. It's entertainment, but you're encouraging basically narcissistic rage. <laughs> it's another one of these things that's being made worse. I mean, that's pretty much my entire stream. I mean, I literally just rage at the video yeah, game. That's true. I'm, you know, I mean, obviously I'm not very good that. at video games in general. I mean, 90, well, I'm doing it for entertainment purposes, of yeah. course. 95% uh, of people that stream, they, they, they do become like a react dandy that they, they, they play it up you know because you've got to you almost have to be like the little dancing clown a little bit yeah i have to think i have to think about the colossal rage because i like that too but but what so part of what makes that authentic is you're playing a re, you're playing like a really hard video game that that you build up and build up and build up and and then it goes wrong you know, like you're not getting mad just because you died and you can't let yourself die. You're getting mad well, because there, is, there are several things to it. Obviously, like I'm not very good at video games in general. Just kind of suck. Always have done because I'm old or whatever the fuck. Obviously, I'm playing a very difficult game. But yeah, it is exaggerated, of course, because if I'm playing Cuphead by myself in a dark room, I am not screaming at the top of my lungs every single time I die, obviously. Because no. I'm not insane. But that gaming rage, like the the gaming rage in like uh, Call of Duty type games where, you know, you're playing multiplayer, you're just playing with random people and you're just, you know, you're not a professional. You're not a streamer. You're just are talking to the people, you know, in the lobby or whatever. That type of rage, I think, is like that's that I think it probably has gotten worse because of the fact that the influencers playing these games are having narcissistic rage <laughs> explosions, you know, doing things that aren't normal behavior. I think that gets replicated by people and they, and they start to think it's totally acceptable. That, I, I'm really happy you brought that up because one example I can think of is uh, Jinxie. Uh, I think uh, he got called White Ice Show Speed and he like proper got tilted over it. But he's someone that has blown up because the way most streamers have blown up within the past year or so, there's been a lot of them, is solely from short form content. I think Ludwig did like a whole... Uh, a whole lecture stream about this at one point that everyone that's blown up on streaming whether youtube or twitch wasn't from their streams but because they did like these little react andy bits that would be shared on shorts because most people are on their phones and that you would mean like viral. live stream fails like they're baiting live stream fails yeah exactly but live stream fails is like the, the main age of a live stream fails user is probably like 25 to 30 but then like on on clips and shorts it is just like you know the actual team. toddlers yeah yeah and then they'll find it be like oh he's funny he squeams a lot but he's someone who gets very like like he like Jigsy basically got famous from talking shit about he would he played Rainbow Six Siege basically single handedly revived the game because it was dying, uh, <laughs> but he would get sent clips of other people's gameplay and he would roast them like for example the, the, there's a ranking system in Siege right it's it's like uh, bronze. Uh, it's like copper, silver, gold, platinum, like whatever it is. But as soon as he would see bad gameplay, he'd be like, um, so we're in copper. And now whenever I'm playing Siege, I hear like a bunch of people just mimicking exactly what he's doing, you know, kind of like roasting their teammates right. by just saying buzzwords like, um, so we're in copper. But mm. I, I, I like Jinxie. I think he's very entertaining. Like, I don't mean to shit on him, but it's funny how one streamer can actually have such an influence. And if they're, if they're a bad streamer someone that's very aggressive or, or narcissistic that can then bleed over into the audience and it's funny as well because like video games 
over the past like 10 years they have tried so hard to get rid of that like trash talking aspect like mm. uh you know the memes of like people talking shit in csgo lobbies uh, like old call of duty lobbies you know like, mm. like the round ends and they're all like talking shit like screaming slurs like like more recently released games like uh, halo infinite that came out a couple of years ago you, you could not speak to the enemy team at any point that, that there was nothing and the game almost like kind of died because of that because there was no community the community being you can't scream slurs at each other yeah yeah exactly of like call of like, duty i don't know and, if... and, and and like like overwatch so uh, yeah i'm nearly done it's like overwatch for example they've admitted that they actually record what you're saying to almost spook you into like don't say anything bad don't say anything bad oh, to your wow. team don't flame them so the game companies are trying so hard to make the game more you know friendly for like new players but it's almost having the opposite effect because people feel more contained now and it's like no i i want to you know be i, I want to scream slurs i, I want to flame my teammates i like the way world of warcraft handled that where if like horde and alliance could speak to each other but the speech was translated into a language you couldn't understand that's like where like keck was like lol but no one knew what the rest of it meant oh is that where keck came from from well? i think so yeah. Oh, I, I literally thought it was a 4chan bit. Okay. The whole reason I stopped playing Call of Duty was it was becoming harder and harder not to mess with people anymore. Or to mess with people anymore, sorry. So I haven't played a Call oh, of Duty since Ghost. that's how you started Ghost. off, right? Yeah. Call of Duty used to be great because I swear they liked it too. I, I think you played back when it was a feature, uh, Oliver, but do you remember when you'd kill someone, they'd literally give you like a two, three second preview of their microphone? Yeah. Like, so you can hear, you kill somebody, you just hear this guy screaming for your mic. I used to think it was a bug. Like, it was so funny. And then the best part was, you know, between every round, like, if you're playing Search and Destroy, then they turned all the mics on for both teams just for that, like, yeah. five second, ten second interval. But you just heard the amount of slurs you heard. Yeah. And, like you said, it, it died off once um, private voice chats became a thing. But. Yeah, those were the good old days. I mean, the games that allow that now, like, uh, yeah, like, like the point Jay just made, like, like in Warzone, for example, in COD, I haven't played it in ages, but like, I've seen so many videos of people that will sneak up on a, another player and do a finisher, like this, you know, execution move. And then you can hear them screaming down the mic, like, no, <laughs> don't do it, no. But to play a game like that now, which like, I mean, who cares, but it's still kind of funny. You have to read through, like, an entire Bible of, like, you know, code of conduct and all that kind of stuff. No one reads Like, I, I don't I don't mind. I, I just think it's kind of funny, like, nowadays, that you have to have all these stipulations of, like, you're not you're not going to be racist in our game, are you? Because that's kind of bad. <laughs> As opposed to, you know, like, Modern Warfare 2 came out, like, 2008. People were just, like, screaming whatever the fuck they wanted. I mean, e even back then... Uh, I know I'm going on a bit of a tangent, but like you had uh, in the older Call of Duty games, you could actually, uh, you had like emblems and sprays you could put on your gun. Uh, and oh, you could make, yeah. Custom, you could make anything yeah. out of these, right? Like uh, all you would need, all you got is like flags, basic shapes, and you basically had the free reign to do whatever you want. You could report them if they were like vulgar, but that never really did anything. I mean, I'm going to put in chat here. We can't show this. But that that's one, for example, you, so you just join a lobby with like a random guy and he would just have that as his player card. I saw a tweet going around and it was like, <laughs> man, man, I miss when, you know, an innocent tweet being like, man, I miss when we had the creativity to make our own emblem. And then someone replies like, yeah, I wonder why they got rid of it. And it's just like <laughs> it was, the most it was racist that. thing you can imagine. <laughs> yep. The ones we can put that one in. I remember when I was doing it, I was watching tutorials how to make, like, you know, I, I was watching <laughs> tutorials how to make, like, Peter Griffin or something, or, like, anime, right? But then, yeah. I, like how he, I like how his fourth prestige just sweating and racist. It's just a friendly <laughs> ghost. <laughs> friendly ghost with a gun. Yeah, I think like that one. You only had 20 layers in limited shapes, and they somehow managed to, like, you know, racism has no boundaries. <laughs> They just found like, a that way. Was, that was Black Ops 4. That's not even that long ago. It's probably like six years ago. That that baby reaching for the fruit is just someone oh, typed into baby, Google Gemini. Like, you know. Do you guys know what a, a gollywog is? Yeah, I, I know. I know what one is. It was like those little racist dolls that people had, right? I slept with one. Can you say that, Colossal? <laughs> I actually have no idea. But I slept with one in my bed as a kid. I mean, this probably explains quite a lot, to be honest, but yeah. As a child, I'm, I'm just not surprised at all. I hope it was a toy and not a real person. Both, yes. I slept with a little African child in my bed for quite a long time. Every night he sleeps Still with do. It's this little comfort toy. Well, actually, there are multiple of them now.
That's the only yeah, difference. Yeah, he had a so little see, toy. I mean, I had no idea. I was no no just a kid. I had no idea it was racist. Yeah. Childhood. My parents may have Pal, been racist this is because teddy they bear. for me. And like, but no, no, they weren't because it was like a normal <laughs> thing to own going back, you know, several centuries. My grandparents had like a little painting and there's just all these toys and a couple of them are gollywog dolls. Yeah, they they were everywhere in the UK, I remember. Mm. And then, like, I remember, it just came out in the news. Wait, they're actually racist? Really? Who would have seen that coming? I, have no idea. I mean, it's like how um, Pokemon had Jinx, which was based on the gollywog doll or the, you know, the is it actually? stereotype. I, mean, I, I would yeah. not be surprised. They turned the they turned Jinx this Pokemon purple because it was literally a black faced Pokemon. And then same with Dragon Ball Z, they had Mr. Poe, right. I think his name was. Mr. Papa. And he, he's just conveniently never like seen again. Or did they turn him purple as well? I can't remember that. Can't so remember his that. was based off of like an Indian god character or whatever, right? It wasn't even supposed to be like a, a, like a, um, a gollywog or whatever. But yeah, I know what you mean. That, like the charge I mean, of my probably, lasers. That might have been the cope the creator came out with. <laughs> oh yeah, just actually changed purple and that's it. Yeah, yeah. even with the lips and stuff as well. I had someone on stream say I like that Pokemon just because the hair. Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, what the just... hell? You've actually got well, the hair. Well, that's your next cosplay, your next dress up. And you've got the dress as well. Yeah. <laughs> what dress? When have I ever worn a fucking dress? Uh, wait. I was going to say a dress <laughs> a like... I, I was going to say a dress like that, and then I... Yeah, I just opened <laughs> myself up there. Yeah, just do purple face next cosplay. I just like how you just know, like, a child made that one. That's definitely Pyro's editor who made that. Yeah, I was going to say that, actually. I didn't want to... <laughs> 100%. <laughs> then you were born. It's so dry. It's just... actually... I'm going through these still. Like, how the fuck did they get, like... The, the emblems I get, right? But then, like, you've just got names like this, and it was just, like... It's there's no way it was auto banned already. Like what the fuck? Is <laughs> just the clan name as well? I'm just curious. In uh, Overwatch, did they ban people? Like were they actually <laughs> listening through race. all of the audio and then it's banning just, people? It's just every I think if race someone got enough reports, like, then they would actually have There used to be the it used to be um, <laughs> things like that where you you would hear about I don't know. Oh, this is <laughs> oh, <laughs> this oh is being recorded, God. and you're thinking, "Well, there's no way a human is ever going to be able to listen to this." But now, with with AI, like that's possible. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why that one got me so bad, but like just bro, the whole pulled out checklist. His, pulled out a checklist. checklist. <laughs> we can't even talk about anything that you're laughing at. All of this. Okay, what do you want to show? One of them. We, but we, yeah, we, we can't, can't show with that the one. emblems because it's. I mean, it's not funny, that just, one. It's got every fucking slur in the book. <laughs> on no, 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 no. How did they make that? Or did they make that using all oh, alternative it's just with, characters? With shapes. So, so like Jay said, you, you were given like a pre-selected amount of shapes to work with to make an emblem. It's just like squares, triangles. So you had twenty layers like to work with. Must yeah, have, they must have added more layers in later games because <laughs> there's twenty <laughs> layers just to, for all those slurs. But yeah, it's the fact he's only rank. Yeah. It's the fact he's only rank six. Like he just got banned as a new <laughs> account the first and he's just racist thing he does. again. Yeah. <laughs> and that kind of thing you look at that and you go that's ironic racism like it's whoever, whatever kid oh, no, made that it's, they're it's just not. trying to say what's imp what's like the most <laughs> what's the most prohibited thing you know it's either like an like, actual you, racist like mid-20s guy or it's just like a 12 year old <laughs> who finds it funny <laughs> yeah you go you go actually zoom in on that guy's house and it is someone who's in the it, in it's the as well like clan i like how they really tried to make as much effort as they could with the 20 layers like they did not have to have that guy laughing and what ryan put in but they had him <laughs> laughing anyway just they just really the, wanted to get their fucking I can't show this one either man like what annoys me is the cycle basically like the the industry that's built up on um getting offended about things like this so like obviously this i think this is obviously made by someone who's about 11 years old and they're yeah, trying to make the right most the prohibited most thing but then there are these like ngos that take donations and the the way that they raise money is by compiling things like this and being like look at the white supremacy that is going on on this platform. Look I mean, at all they, of these they did examples. They with YouTube when they were targeting YouTube, right? Like they were showing uh, random uploads of like, wasn't it terrorist videos that had ads on them? So then they were basically yes. trying to very weakly prove that YouTube was supporting terrorism or something. Oh, Pyro, it, it goes very... so much deeper than that. Like there's this whole industry now of doing, basically being paid to do what that article did where um, brands will pay, they'll pay some grifter to 
find all the all of the things that all of the videos that they wouldn't want to have their ad play on and then they use that to make sure that they never get associated with someone who they don't like and it's like it's a massive industry now like it, it sprung up the same way that um like headhunters for copyrighted content goes you know how like if we use a song um in our videos like you just went through this you use a song that's copyrighted it gets claimed um maybe not even automatically but it'll be claimed manually there this industry sprung up of these people that sort of sit in the middle and just make money off of that system uh an industry sprung up of brand safety where they basically like make lists of controversial people and then uh warn brands about oh you know you need to make sure when you run ads on youtube that you have this channel blocked and this channel blocked and this channel blocked so that you never can be in a screenshot of something that you don't align with my theory has always been that when legacy media mainstream media noticed a significant decline in ads due to their advertisers now having started to spend a lot more with YouTube, they retroactively went out of their way to dissuade brands from continuing to do that. So this was when like the Wall Street Journal ran their article pointing out some of the more extreme examples of content that had been monetized when it shouldn't have been. Um, I won't say the names of the videos, but you remember which ones. Mm -hmm. And that led to YouTube then changing its entire policy in a radical way. I mean, they went completely overboard with it. And it was just because of those very few select videos. I actually believe that they were uploading some of those videos themselves. They could be using an employee to do it or maybe hiring out to a third party, but they were physically putting one of these videos out onto the website, one of these more edgy videos, let's call it that, attempting to get it monetized, achieving that, and then at a later date, pointing to it and being like, well, look at the ads that are running on this. Look at the companies that are, that are putting ads on this. Should you really be advertising on a website that allows this? Maybe you should come back to us and start running more ads with us again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out that conspiracy because there has been proven a couple times that the New York Times has done fishy things. I think recently they just got accused of... Uh, Elon said that the screenshots that they posted in their article were like impossible to make because what you're saying, I do agree with that. It is obviously in the mainstream media's uh, interest, self-interest to make YouTube look like as this is not possible. a safe place for your money to go. You yeah. need to come back to putting ads in newspapers, you know, stuff will always slip through the cracks that shouldn't because unfortunately so much of YouTube is automated, but yeah, to make the kind of, to make that reach of like, oh, YouTube's actually supporting this because it has ads. Like they're they're enabling this. Like 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 almost as if like YouTube knows and they're looking the other way when it just really isn't the case. There's something intruding into. I just can't believe I defended a billion dollar company. Oh, I feel dirty. <laughs> oh, there's, some, sucks, there's something man. intruding into this situation that isn't natural, and that's that's that we would be trying to hold corporations to a standard where they don't want a despic like a person who the mob has decided is bad that they don't want them as a customer because the corporation does right like okay this is it's kind of hard to say this but like coca-cola wants racists to drink coca-cola because coca-cola wants like coca-cola not the collection of people uh, the like, collection of individual people but the the brainless uh basically like profit driven entity that is the quote unquote individual of the corporation this is a mindless profit machine it's trying to make as much money as it can legally right so it doesn't want to like coca-cola doesn't want to poison people not because it loves people but because it will doesn't want to kill its customers and get in trouble right so this weird thing this weird trend has happened in the cancellation era where people are trying to hold corporations uh, accountable for who their customers are. It's very, it's strange and it doesn't, it's not natural and it doesn't work. It's a great. I mean, isn't I it think. just corporations would want everyone to use their products? So they make yeah, that's money, what I mean. That that's what I mean. So like if you run an ad on a racist piece of content, 
like that you who would be watching that content like maybe a racist it wouldn't work with a brand like coca-cola because it's just too enormous yeah too many people drink it. People who abuse, like people who abuse their spouses, drink Coca Cola. Murderers drink Coca Cola. It's like a, this is a general purpose product, and yeah, this weird thing has started happening in the ESG era of trying to hold brands accountable for who would ever be associated with their brand. So not just a spokesperson. But if it's a really small company or a much smaller company, for example, Gamersups. They suddenly have lots of videos and images pop up of known, less desirable individuals drinking and consuming this product within their videos and in their content. Then that could become a huge problem. That's where it would work. I'm realizing now there might be kind of a hypocrisy here as far as right and left leaning people. I, just even saying right and left leaning, we always get yelled at by, I always get yelled at by, um, I guess, our international um our international viewers where they're like, oh, he's an American. He's thinking only in the, the political binary of the U.S. And, you know, I, hey, that may be true. Like, I, I'm influenced by our politics more than than uh, global politics, which yeah, even, maybe even are more though, spectral or whatever. I, I know I know where you're coming from, but I can also see why people, when they hear, like, right or left, their brain just closes. Yeah, yeah. It's I, almost okay, like you're, so. you're opening something else and they're talking. And they're you know, comparing with their own experiences with, and there are there are other countries that have um, that are more representative of like their constituents. Like they have more parties. You know, we're we're locked in the U.S. into a binary that seems to, it, and this is part of why I opt out of all of all of that. Like I don't I don't want to align with either man party or orange man. Hmm. Which one? <laughs> like Which one? basically, they're trying to they try to basically carve up all of reality into two choices, and it just doesn't work that way. Not not every issue is going to split evenly into two types of people. So I, I don't like that. And I, I, Hey, if you're in a country where you have multiple, like three or more political parties and you've got a parliament that's full <laughs> three, of three different men. Yeah. That'd be, that would be nice. I I'm jealous. Okay. When we did that alien episode, the reaction to that, I've been thinking about that reaction a lot because, um, that, that episode like didn't serve our view. Well, okay. So there were some people that were like, this is, this episode is goaded. I love this. This is great. I'm glad you're talking about this. So it's, this is not all the people, all of their reaction, but there was a significant portion of the audience who that episode that did not serve their needs. And I was thinking about why not. And basically it's like, if you're someone who listens to podcasts and listens to YouTube videos to kind of like get the get a feel for what's going on and and what they can talk about like at school or something or like um what you know like imagine you're someone who watches uh critical or you know or pyro live god forbid yeah you're doing you're doing that because I you're, mean, you're trying to basically like twice <laughs> you're trying to is there there's a type of person who watches that kind of content yeah they're all below the age of 12 they're trying to basically like sync up it's the same reason i think that that younger kids watch reaction content is they're trying to basically sync up their opinion on like what is basically going to work for me socially what should I think I, about I this? I think it's it's more as well because it really is just very surface level, superficial. Like whenever I've done slop or whenever Critical's done slop or, you know, other channels, it's not like, you know, we're going to sit here and say this was a huge deep dive analysis. Like it really is just surface level slop with like, with like a few quick jokes thrown in. Like I, I, I did a meet and greet uh, a couple of days ago and I would say the average age there was probably around like 16. How putrid was the smell? <laughs> You know what? I like that this this is the the sad thing, which is really fucking like depressing. Like I expected, because some people from the to be honest, uh, the, this podcast, the Patreon server, five dollars a month. They they said they were coming. Or worth your money. They they said they said they were coming, and I thought that they would just be completely grotesque mutants, but they were actually some of the most like normal people. And I even asked the server, I was like, I expected you all to be fucking freaks of nature. How did you all like actually look normal? <laughs> well, the ones that are freaks of nature didn't leave. No, the no, house. exactly. One of them literally pointed out, well, we're the ones. That that are actually allowed to like leave the house i was like yeah fair point actually so uh, the, the point i was building to is like pyro when you make a video or critical makes a video i guess you don't have to speculate about critical we'll just talk about you the videos that you make you're almost never you're never saying something that isn't basically like the accepted opinion of yesterday's twitter you know like if you talk about something you're not going to take a position that is going to really put you out there and expose you you're kind of just letting people know like what happened yesterday and what is everybody saying about this 
right? Yeah. I, I mean, you can even just like say I'm a coward and I'm fence sitting, which like I'll, I'll, you're I'll a totally... coward and you're fence sitting. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Beat you to it. Unlucky. Unlucky. I literally had to say that as defense because I knew Colossal would say that. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. It's it's just retelling, right? Because I, I've admitted myself, like like the. The, the slup channel is just to make money to fund the main like, like the, the, the stuff yeah. on there is drivel and like everyone will forget what they watched after probably like five minutes like, like none of it sinks in tiktok roast party to, like yeah yeah exactly like i did he he roasted me for this in the server by the way <laughs> i did like a, a like a 14 minute video on a bunch of kids that went to a party Oof. and that was it and they were just listening to carnival by kanye and there was this fake flyer going around for a TikTok Riz party and people in the comments started gaslighting everyone into thinking that was the TikTok Riz party. And it became a huge circle joke because usually what happens with memes that they've got a very short shelf life now because how quick, you know, like TikTok and all the short form content. And then people were already trying to invest in ironic memes of like, you know, I, I saw this one video of a guy being like, uh, you know, people that find TikTok Riz party funny. And he's like pretending to be in a Discord call, and and the guy that finds TikTok Riz party is just like so fucking cringe. And usually that's what happens: people start shitting on a meme because it becomes so saturated. But they're still defending it now. It's like I, I saw a guy do that video, and then all the top comments are, "Bro was there, bro was at the the TikTok Riz party." Like they're literally gatekeeping this meme from dying out. It's insane. So uh, just just to keep building, I'm sorry. This is just the way my brain works. It takes too long for me to build a point. No, it's so just fine. A any time I hear TikTok Riz party i just have like an aneurysm and forget five seconds it's so a, so you make a horrible uh, sentence like pyro live videos and critical videos and i would say some ordinary gamer videos they the points that they the points that they make are generally what it's a point that probably has twenty thousand likes two thousand likes on twitter it's kind of like what the mob has or decided reddit. it's like <laughs> you know reddit comment on reddit as this, well uh, I love yeah reddit. like this this gaming company did this and everybody's mad about it right something like that it's like this is this is i can say this is unacceptable and that these people should you know shouldn't have done this and everybody's gonna basically agree this is not a controversial take and what i what i kind of did whether it was on purpose or not uh that i that i don't think served enough of our viewers is i talked about something that if you were on the school bus and you started talking about like uh aliens or demons or whatever you would everyone would look at you like you are totally uh out of the norm you are not safe to hang around with what's wrong with you not with his audience <laughs> so like what i was trying yeah what i was trying to point out is like here is a very weird trend that i've noticed and what some of the audience didn't get was that that wasn't my opinion like i'm not i am not saying that aliens are demons I'm saying, isn't it interesting that all of these people who have a large audience are suddenly saying aliens are demons? That's a weird thing to say. That's what I was trying to say. And there were, I noticed a thread in like under that video that made me like void Wojak when I read it because it was <laughs> multiple people talking to each other who seemed confused and they thought that did, that was did, did my you just theory. Say void Wojak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that's like how you I had thought. to pull up the Wojak database as a reaction yeah. image. <laughs> the, I, I void Wojak. The thing is, I think you're almost doing yourself a disservice by even bringing it up because now there are all going to be people like the comments affected you and you're using it as a coping mechanism by even addressing it. No, they do. I do read the I read the comments because uh, I'll say like 50% of what I decide to make a video on is is uh, maybe it's 49%. But like I make videos about topics that I'm interested in and that I know our audience will be interested in. With your latest video, Nerd, your top comment was if this was Pyro, he, you know, he'd spend an hour describing what Is that the top was. fucking comment on his yeah. video? <laughs> yeah, and that's like, I don't Kill know yourself. if it's a trend anywhere else, but that is a trend on my slop videos. No, it's it is. Like, like, imagine this, right? I do eight minutes slop. I'm not saying it's great or anything, but like, it, it gets shit on, right? And then when he does, like, you know, welcome back to slop love. <laughs> to today, I just pitted my kit, uh, and and then everyone will be like, Pyro. If Pyro did a video on this, he would be explaining what a cat is for eight minutes. Yeah, like, yeah. And I then, hearted then, it too, so I made it worse. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
the, I hearted a couple of them, and that's why I guess it caught on. But oh no, the, I just see it now. Yeah, it was funny to see it. On, I click on your Paralympic. video, nerd. Like five Paralympic minutes after it came out, explaining what and the top is. comment was that. And I think I even got. <laughs> I was so early. I got first reply saying like, "Why the hell is this?" in nerds comment section as well i like how they're actually congratulating the comment as well kill yourselves look at this parasitical <laughs> free rent uh, Py pyro as far as slop goes and like <laughs> us talking shit about it or whatever i think you have the second best slop channel i think it's uh, you, you still um you still think um <laughs> first right yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He's i think Oompa's got a big he's got a bigger team and he's got like his old friends that are doing yeah, writing I, I and talked research to him and about stuff. that and he basically says he'll just have like a meeting once a day with his team you know because like he hired all of his mates and stuff which is based and yeah he was uh but yeah no his videos are definitely uh higher quality because i remember depth. when he just yeah. used to do like tiktok reactions and like subreddit stuff but then he kind of realized wait slop yummy yummy Mine now. When I when I watch like a critical video, and critical's been reaping the rewards of of keeping at this forever. Uh, he's the top guy, and yep. when I when I listen to those, I just hear basically like Twitter. I hear Twitter plus this. Oh, I mean, like he he in his defense though, like yeah, like you said, he's established, right? But I would much prefer he be like number one than someone else, right? I mean, yeah, some people might say he's mid and stuff, but I generally I, agree with his takes. I yeah I. I enjoy what he does, you know, the content. It's it's nothing amazing, uh, but it's still, you know, and and what you were saying about uh, him doing Twitter takes, I mean, I mean, it's what I do, right? Like, like it's fence sitting because once you start being opinionated, mm -hmm. then like that's when that's when the schism happens in your audience. You want to try to please as many people as you can, but also, you know, if you take a hard side, you alienate the other half. And this yeah. sounds really bad, right? It almost sounds like you're being fake, but coward. at the same time, <laughs> yeah, be, being a coward. I mean, you are being a bit of a coward, definitely, but I would much rather just kind of give a recap of an event that's going on myself than having to be like well let's mm, me as a rightoid unless you uh, want to argue online all day long or, unless you want to argue or, online all day long or, you, know, you do have to be aware of like what is going to trigger that kind of what is going to be considered political and then pick your battles i think you well know? it's not and even you, like you don't, don't want to battle if you don't every want day. to be political people will make you be political yep. or force their yeah. politics onto you, you say a single so sentence e and they'll spin even if you're somehow. a even if you're like glorified fence sitter like people will still you know get there'll be an order you for being a fence sitter which is fair but i'd much rather be called that than you know someone that's like uh trying to be one side of the political spectrum i, I think I it's, hate that I, stuff, I would man. much rather be someone that is a bit of a fence sitter and just kind of giving a general recap than someone who's like one side of, of the political spectrum and they're proud of it because that's when it becomes yeah, fucking well, then cringe you get that audience yeah yeah exactly no thanks what sucks about that is it sometimes it happens like basically the mob like you said will t will tell people that they're that they are the other political side of them like you're the enemy you're this you know people do that to me a little bit they'll say you're far right if i put jordan peterson in the video yeah and and i'm not you know and fuck <laughs> you <laughs> like i don't think you should be telling Nuances anyone what they are most people Right. They put um, you in their own little head cannon box based on a couple of things, and then you're yeah, written what, off for What life. they're trying to do is so cowardly. Like what they're trying to do. It, so part of it is they're trying to be your friend. They're trying to basically be like, I like you, and I don't want to have to uh, lose you by you having this opinion that is not my own. So they're trying to basically police you and be like, Hey, we're friends, right? Come back to the herd. And I don't like that. You shouldn't need a herd. You don't need to feel safe by being like. Oh, I think what everyone thinks. <laughs> like, think what you think. Come up with your own opinion. Say something every once in a while that you haven't heard someone say. You don't need to, like, be afraid of every once in a while you say something that, you know, makes people nervous or hurts someone's feelings. I think like, what, one thing that really annoys me as well is, like, if another creator go gets under drama or has like allegations against them i always get a lot of people ask me like oh why haven't you done a video on, on it or like or what's your opinion on it and it's like stuff like that is always developing right like why should you be the person to like initially <laughs> jump on it like on straight allegations away? two yeah. minutes yeah. after they happen it's also yeah. none and, of your and fucking they business literally you know? poorly aged within like a fucking within two days so when yeah, someone is in, so when someone is he, like pyro you've you've seen this firsthand when someone is being get uh dogpiled I hit them up like generally and I'm usually like it's gonna be okay like this is 
I know that you're in a storm right now, but it's going to be fine. I did, I did that with you and I don't, I guess I don't need to say who else I did that with, but like, if I, if I see someone that's being dogpiled and it, it doesn't, I don't know how to say this, but like, I know that it'll pass. I will try to let them know that because it, I know that that feels lonely to them. You know, like they, they think that, holy shit, it's all coming to an end. It's over. It's over. It's over. You know? And like, you don't want them to like hurt themselves or quit or make it worse. Like they need to, whether they need to address it or not, whether they need to apologize or not, like you don't want them to take it more seriously than it needs to be taken. Yeah, exactly. Like like, like what you're, you're basically feeling like sympathy. I wouldn't say empathy, more sympathy. And no, also you I want to be a psychopathic to... narcissist. No. <laughs> True. Somebody replied to uh, t- replied to the tweet I made about this video. Like, oh, so you're making a video about yourself? Like, what? When, yeah. When we went into the narcissistic topic, I did I did self reflect on this. I'm like, okay, how how do my behaviors uh, mimic some? Like, how how do my behaviors align with what I'm criticizing? And, uh, and I don't think the, the end result of coming out of that tunnel of self-reflection is I don't think I'm a narcissist, but I do think that in order to, you know, make, uh, content creation and have it successful, I think you have to, I think you have to act narcissistically. You have to sort of like enter a mode where you act that way. Well, in content creation. Yeah. In order to post something online where it's like, you are the center of attention, like it's something about that is expressing narcissistic thinking. You know? uh, I mean, you're putting yourself out in the limelight, but but it's like, you know, me, for example, like when I make videos, you know, like like I'm I'm very different off camera. Like I'm not as, you know, as loud and outgoing as I am in projects. Uh, it's it's like, for example, when I met uh, PewDiePie as well, like, like years ago, like when I met him, I was surprised how like kind of quiet and reserved he was. I mean, like Swedish people usually are, to be fair. But with him, it was like I was just, you know, seeing this guy from all of his videos and how loud he was and then meeting him in person. And he was very, like, just quiet, which is fine. That's not a negative thing at all. But, yeah, just the huge discrepancy between, you know. Uh, and then what kind of story would uh, Quibble Cop tell about the time that he met Pyrocynical? Oh, he was uh, a quiet bro, guy. He probably, he probably he wouldn't even nice remember guy. me. Yeah, no, I, I met, uh, <laughs> when I did Insomnia, there was a Sloggo and Jelly who used to be part of his group. Uh, and they were doing a meet and greet and I had no idea of the law. And I, I, I asked them the first thing I said, like, oh, you know, how you doing? Like, how's things been? Good. And and then I said, like, uh, oh, yeah, uh, how come uh, Quebble Cop isn't with you, Geordie? And then they just both looked at each other and they were like, oh, we don't do videos with them anymore. I was like, oh, shit. I think Quebble Cop's an interesting guy. And that always that always surprises people when they hear me say that because they they know his persona and they know you know, they know him online through what he's putting out there and it doesn't i'm telling you when you talk to him privately it is not the same as his content um and there's another guy like that i don't want to out him but there's someone who's pretending to be dumb in a good way in a good way way. yeah no quibble cop is an eccentric genius thankfully most youtubers when you talk to them like uh privately or off camera they're actually functional human beings it's just the the i I could talk to i've talked to quibble cop for probably i don't know 50 hours at this point he's he has fascinating insight on things and he will gladly tell you every secret to success he knows the way he puts it is is interesting he goes um and i like that i like people who are who will share what works who are open about things i like open source stuff i like uh, um i like people who have the confidence to tell you um you know like how they make something so because they know that that's not all there is to them you know like I'll tell people what camera I use, what lens I use, whatever, you know, I don't care. And I like other people who will do that. And Quibble Cop will tell you anything he does that's working. He'll, he'll tell you all his secrets. And he says, he says in his, in his thick accent, uh, I won't try to imitate it, but he's like, yeah, sure. I'll tell people things because half the time they think they think they know better than me and they won't take the advice anyway. So I just tell them. <laughs> but yeah, Quibble Cop's, Quibble Cop's uh, like, a secret deep thinker but also very eccentric he's got some strange oh, like, i mean strange that, that's a given with all the ai stuff he was pulling for like two yeah, months yeah. straight <laughs> i think that's 5d chess to be honest and then also um uh well i don't i don't want to blow him up but there there's a commentary channel who is secretly very smart and he's and is pretending to be dumb <laughs> and he's very good to talk to that that accent is not intelligence that's not like colossal's accent is associated with uh fancy schools and the ninja turtle accents are associated with dumb people 
skateboarders and surfers and stuff who don't spend their life doing anything. Perfect way to showcase Colossal's accent would be to do an ad read. Well, I thought someone else would do the ad read this time. Why would anyone? Why would anyone replace? They always complain when anyone else does it. You are you I, are the best at it. To be I fair, I can do it. We just might take twenty minutes to get through it. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll just start reading it, guys. So I just heard something mind blowing. Okay. So you know when you search for something on Netflix and what you get is you a need more energy, of man. What? Ad no, reads fell off. I know. We need a little more energy. I, I feel Colossal needs to pick this one up. You don't sound Could blown. You, or, should I, or should I try again? Yeah, but uh, increase the increase the increase the blown sounding. Guys, so I just heard something mind blowing. Okay, so you know when you search for something on Netflix and what you get is a fraction of what Netflix actually has. Netflix actually has more than eighteen thousand titles globally, but only like six thousand of those are available in the U.S. You're missing out on literally thousands of great shows unless you use ExpressVPN. How does ExpressVPN work? ExpressVPN is an app that lets you change your online location so you can control where you want Netflix to think you're located. They have over 100 different locations, so you can gain access to thousands of new shows no matter where you live. This works with many other streaming services like Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Max, BBC iPlayer, who the fuck is that? A free option normally only available in the UK. Uh, what show have I got to give like a fucking personal endorsement? Uh, oh, wait, I, what's um, the shows? South Africa. What the fuck? Godfather Part 2. Is that, yeah. that so what you put for the endorsement? Okay, well, right. that's where they're available. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, let me do that's that. That's where I watched them anyway. What shows have you watched with ExpressVPN? When I was in South Africa, I watched The Godfather Part 2. That's and not when I was in Australia, the prompt is asking. I that was the hit. I thought you had to you say just the country and then... The well, yeah, you, when, you're <laughs> using the v, when you're using the VPN set to the country, not the actual fucking country. Oh, yeah, true, true. Okay. You moron. What shows have you watched using ExpressVPN? When I set my VPN to South Africa, I could get access to The Godfather Part 2. And if I set it to Australia, I could watch Lord of the Rings. All I had to do was connect my VPN to any country. Oh, wait. Oh, that wouldn't work, actually. Uh, I think, no, that's it, right? Surely no, all I had to do use... was... Open ExpressVPN, connect it to South Africa. One button. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. True. That was it. All I had to do was open ExpressVPN, connect to South Africa or Australia, and then I could watch the content I wanted. Why would you use ExpressVPN? It's super fast. I can stream everything in HD with no buffering, and it works on any device. I can enjoy my shows from my phone, laptop, TV, and PS5. You name it, it just works. <laughs> Just always a way to rent PS5. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it like white knuckling my chair as he's doing this. It also encrypts your data. ExpressVPN also protects your privacy and security. Oh, fuck. I don't stumble that. <clears throat> encrypts your data. ExpressVPN also protects your privacy and security to keep you safe from hackers. So stop missing out on great TV and get thousands of new shows with ExpressVPN. We oh yeah, we got them to give you guys three extra months for free when you use our special link expressvpn.com forward slash tbh. That's expressvpn.com. Do you actually have to spell it? That's why they put you, the hyphens. Fucking hell. That's e x p r e s s v p n dot com slash tbh to get. I can spell hooray to get three extra months completely free. When you said when you said HD, that reminded me when we were when we were thinking of names for the podcast. I said we can call it TBH as long as nobody calls it TBH. I'm like I will not <laughs> participate in that. And Colossal goes, I know what you mean, and we won't do that. Pyro, when you see when you say TBH, how do you say it? I don't think I've heard you say it. Uh, TBH. Okay. T TBH. <laughs> you yeah. don't. Say, no one calls it TBH. He's saying it fast enough where you don't notice. Most people H. don't even know why we chose that specific name. It's so ridiculous. And they'll never know. They should know. 
I put this earlier in the chat. I don't know if you saw Oliver, but yeah, someone actually cracked the code on my subreddit. It's like, not a big code to crack, it's quite not a frankly. Very hard code to crack. It's like a two. This isn't a fucking code. imitation game. <laughs> the imitation game. Right, we've had uh, various questions bit from our patron, five dollars a month. Well worth your time and money. Uh, we're going to get through some of these. We're going to ignore ninety nine percent of them. Oh yeah, well yeah, because, because not enough time. No, well mostly because and they're most dog of them shit. suck shit. W one, I don't think we can put this in, but one thing that just lives rent free in my head with doing the Patreon questions is when Colossal was going through them last time, and he just read out loud. Can you explain why Burger Boy tried to riz up a fifteen year old? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just fucking dying. No it's context at all as well. It's just the word it's just the word riz being <laughs> And then he goes, Yep, that's what he happened. Did riz a fifteen year old though. <laughs> We've got all sorts. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, he, he didn't he know. Didn't, yeah, I was gonna say he didn't know 15. that was the Some people would well, be like, Nothing like that is happening in my Discord and Klaus was like, Yep, that happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it did happen. And he's still there. Like, we didn't kick him. Oh, yeah, he's he's learned to do the whole self-aware bit as a coach. Just, just cries every time someone brings it up or plays it up as a bit. But, yeah, he did Riz a 15-year-old. Well. Just stop saying Riz. Just Riz. It's not going in anyway. It's fine. Leave it in. Riz a 15-year-old. People think it's uh, people think it's really bothering me if they say cat or kitten or if they if they whatever something about a kitten. It's like no, that doesn't really bother me. Can we not talk about the cat gifts again? Are we, are we, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, are we talking about the cat? Yeah, gifts? Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. The right, fucking fine. cat gifts. We're not doing that. <laughs> but uh, Dolan, question for Dolan. Talk about the touching allegations. Do you know what that's about? <laughs> I res I just responded to them saying I touched touched. 90% of the server. I don't know what You don't deny. About. You will touch people. It's over. It's over. Yeah. His career is done. Ask Nerd if he'll ever come back. No. We already had that question on the Patreon. We yeah. said no to no, it. I think they're well. going to ask it every he single wasn't, time. He hasn't even been here. We've just got like a, an AI that sounds like him. Yeah, no, I think, I think everyone, will be, it'll be, everyone will be happier um, posting without me. That's fine. I'll be happier not reading it. How much to see Pyro and Uncle Ben fight in person? Uncle Ben is me. That's the name I use, the username I use on the server. Uh, I would do that, and Uncle to Ben, be honest. a boxing match sponsored by Uncle yeah. Ben's Rice. You spoiled it, Colossal, because like that was one of the big tells of someone using a burner account who'd already been banned. When they came in and they already knew Uncle Ben was Colossal, that was uh, that was someone who was It is who funny was, when uh, people get confused before. and don't know it's Colossal. There's been a few people who join us like, who the fuck is Uncle Ben just thinking it's a moderator and then Colossal times him out for adding him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they get let into a trap. People go, yeah. hey, ping, oh, ping old Ben and let him know something. And then people do it. And then oh, yeah. I, I remember making an announcement like, if you have any problems with the server, just ask Uncle Ben. Yeah. And it's they pinned. all get, they all get punished well, for that. By the way. It's pinned. So half the new people <laughs> fall for it. Yeah. <laughs> Poor fuckers, and they get they punished because Colossal doesn't want to be bothered. In. Just ask a simple question and then get banned. You instantly get silenced for <laughs> actually just some money printer. amount of time. Um, they asked Pyro, any future games you're looking forward to? There's no games. Probably none because you don't play games from this. There's the DLC decade. for Elden Ring, but that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, yeah I just I, I can't plays even... games from the 90s, so like he yeah. doesn't look forward to the new ones. One bit. He has one bit. I mean, I mean you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, though. Like, I've, I've just been playing through Tomb Raider at the minute, and that came out in, like, 96 or yeah. before I was born. Yeah, just prove my point. It, I remember, like, Jay will always say he plays games that came out, like, 20 years ago, or they're, like, a horror game with PS1 graphics. That's it. Literally all I play. I no mean, games. we've recommended you Hollow Knight, which you are still yet to try. And among other time. games, <gasps> yeah. Are the, is that is that bugs in Dark Souls? I'm going insane. Ah. Well, didn't you say that you were once sexually attracted to bugs? So, <laughs> I don't, when, when was this ever said? Hey, I, I brought. I never when heard that. was this sentence ever I have, said? I have receipts. I have receipts. I yeah, can fuck He's it. Pull them up. Someone, up. someone. I can't remember who it was in our group chat. Calls you out and is like. Why do you want to fuck fruit and insects? And you responded, I never said I wanted to fuck fruit. <laughs> like <laughs> It's like admitting that you want to fuck insects. Yeah, that, that was a Photoshop. It was a Photoshop job. It does exist. I promise you. I, I know the message you're referring to. No, I think he's jacked off to a fed insect before. 
I wouldn't put it past him. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no denial. Just yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go into my mind palace and recall it. <laughs> oh my god! If it's the fat and it has palace. a mask, if it has no face and is fat, then there's a chance. Well, relevant question. Talk about the porn industry and how damaging it is to adolescent young minds across the <laughs> United States. Yeah, should ask Burger Boy about that. And the people who are in it. <laughs> I mean, true. No, I don't think I will. I, I mean, okay. A I good, mean, are, I, are I, any I think, of us okay. experts on porn? I mean, like, Pyro yeah, hello, isn't hi. even an expert. No, but hi you're me, not even hi. an expert on the stuff that is, like, hurting people. You know, yours is all drawn shit. You're not, yeah. Your industry is not hurting anyone apart from our fucking eyes. Oh, it's it's been banned now, though, on uh, uh, because a lot of people that do, like, drawn porn and stuff uh, on Patreon, they've all been banned now. There's, like, a ban wave. I mean, oh, you know, something I was something I was wondering about as far as like damage being done to kids. When I was looking at the AI models that are being made, <laughs> I was looking at in general what are people making right now, and like one out of every eight, one out of every ten is trans. Like it's a beautiful female figure with a gigantic elephant cock. <laughs> Like that's so, not, that's not trans though, is it? What, what is it again? Yeah, I think Fuda, it's, uh, Fuda, Fuda, whatever. But okay, so Fuda. what? That's the one. Where where are kids seeing that? Or not, maybe it's not that. kids that are doing this, but like where it's are just, people being exposed it's actually to this just image? Internet, it's just internet brain rot. It's like this. Since the internet age, you've got all these people that are well, they'll say they're a hundred percent straight, Pyro. but they seem to like girls with cocks. Pyro. They, uh, I've, ne I've some, never jacked off whole, in my life. There's this whole like group of people that will say it's straight, mm -hmm. and they still like girls, but they also love cock. Pyro. I never jacked off to food in my life, bro. Never in my life. Yeah, a lot of people it's test that way. too as a way of saying that they're not gay, and then you know th that is I mean, not. You've also 100%. got you've also got chases, if you know what that term means, which are very popular online, which is just guys that will only date trans women. Like okay. specifically in that. Hey, we, good, we, good, we, for, we know good for the few. trans people. We know a few. <laughs> Albino, oh, Vivo. We do. No, don't name him. No. <laughs> you know, one thing that I I think that is not being said enough to people who are considering a surgery, and I think we should leave this in, is you need to realize. <laughs> I think we should. Is no one is telling them that they have to consider that a completely different type of person might be attracted to them than they think. It might not be the the type of person they're expecting you need to think through that and think who is actually dating people like this and you can't force it on them and and you're saying there is a class of people called chasers who that is exactly what they want okay good so good for good for them good for both people who like that but you just need to make sure that the a chaser is who you want <laughs> it might right like it might not be who you're expecting burger boy it might be burger boy who will riz you up <laughs> <laughs> Colossal, what was the question? <laughs> next question? Will Pyro ever come to the United States so we can jump him? <laughs> I like that. I, I really expected something wholesome like for a meet and greet, but no, it's literally just yeah, we wanna we wanna shoot you, bro. Pile on him and give cover him in kisses is what they mean. Swarm you in smooches. This goes to really all of you guys separately. If you could replace one member of to be honest, who would you replace them with? Don't that's the sort of question you do not answer. Why? Because <laughs> it's if you, I think if the question, I think was, you misunderstood you, the question. It's saying if you could replace anyone on to be honest. No, it's not. No. Saying if we had to replace someone, who would we replace them with? Ah, oh, okay. I thought it was telling us to name, like I don't, I don't like Pyro. Let's replace. Right, I, I'll, I'll get this over with. Who'd you, who would you replace me with? Let's get this over with. Oh, yeah, let's get it over with. Yes, we would be replacing you. You would be the one to go. <laughs> even though that's not the question that was asked. Nafuckers, we talked about nafuckers. Now, you guys are in a group chat and you talk with him pretty regularly, right? Not He'd really. Like he natural. just shows up to complain about his life and then disappears. But yeah, about that's pretty much it. But it's kind of funny. That would be pretty funny, actually, putting... I'd just fucking make fun of him for the whole episode. I mean, that would be good. <laughs> I would enjoy that. Call him a fat pig, even though he's not even fat. Hasn't been for like five years. He would just be going off on like some Russian rant in incoherent English and I'd just be making pig noises in the background. That would be the whole episode. I would like that. I would like to talk with him about Russia right now. 
now that he's out of now that he's in georgia he can talk a little more freely about it right so i'd like to i'd like to have him talk about some of the we stuff we did that's say to on. him once this country is bombed we'll up uh, we'll have him on as a guest to talk about it he's probably the most likely anyway because we're actually friends of him and it wouldn't be yeah, like exactly. a superficial relationship thing some people don't do that well on podcasts I, when i first started i i I didn't really, I don't know, know how to know how it would go. And then it got easier. But some people, when they do it the first time, they, you find out that they don't like this format very much and they aren't very good. I don't, we don't need to name any names, but there's definitely some people who you would think are really good. And then you hear them on podcasts and they're like kind of frozen. They lock up. Oh, I, I, there's someone who I guess I'll say, I think, cause I think it's pretty obvious. Um, one of the first people to go on the tba one of the first people to go on the h3 h3 podcast was donkey and donkey you would think would be like a freewheeling wild raucous troll because that's how he acts in the footage from when he plays league but on uh, he was giving one word answers and freezing on a yeah podcast. i could see that because i mean like, uh, his videos are very heavily edited and pre-recorded i think i remember like jay told me uh on like when he did a video on Rust, this must have been like seven years ago. Like there was a lot of funny moments in it, but apparently most of it was almost like dubbed over because the stream mm. itself was just pretty like, you know, lackluster, which is normal. Like a lot of people have done that before. But yeah, that doesn't yeah. surprise me. Not everybody thrives in every format and his videos are very entertaining. But in podcast wise, it was like a, a, a cold sweat nightmare. Is this true? Talk about how Pyro left his fans for half an hour after the live show at Insomnia. Is that true? Uh, yeah. I, I did leave my fans because it's called having a break. Yeah, what I was going to say, that mean? when are you supposed a, to a, eat? A human, a human, surprisingly, I can't do a meet and greet from nine in the morning till six in the evening. Are, are they fucking not whining about that? Room and please not eat. Please stay with us the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I, I had, so I had to do meet and greets from nine in the morning to six in the evening, and I got two breaks a day, and no, each break was half an hour around. break. No! Yeah. Like half an hour, 40 minutes, and then I had a stage performance on Sunday, and that just completely fucked everything up because that ate into the... The break. Oh yeah, and I was meant to have a break before that, but then I had to do like an interview as well. So it was just. Did you have to cut the line short? Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, yeah, we we had to cut it. Imagine loads. coming out for that. So for yeah, that I entire was, I remember, time, I remember you're just genuinely like apologizing to like the last couple uh, dozen or so people because I was just like, "I oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm absolutely fucking wiped." It's funny though because I was still I was still able to pull a bit because this. Uh, this one, this one guy says to me like, "Oh yeah, can you come in? You get a picture?" Because I would, uh, this is like really bad for hygiene, but I would always take all their phones off them to like take a selfie. But yeah. I remember saying to one of them when I was like absolutely wiped, because you know when you you kind of get energy like fucking with people, if that makes sense. Like you're with a, no, I'm a psycho. Okay, anyways, <laughs> but one of them was just saying like, "Can we get a picture?" And I was like, and I was like, "Oh yeah, well I gotta charge you like twenty quid for that." Sorry, man. And I just looked at him and like didn't say anything. And then he, he reached out for like 20 quid in his wallet. I was like, no, I'm doing a bit. <laughs> no, you can't do that. They're panicking in that moment. You know, like they'll, th yeah. they'll no, think they're, they're, they're all act like so many of them are anxious though. And then I just say yeah. to them, yeah, like, makes bro, sense it's fine. Like someone yeah. they look up to and then they finally fake. They probably yeah, know, they're, 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 they're all anxious. The and then I, what I usually said to them to try and, you know, I guess empathize with them a bit is like, well, I'm nervous coming to these for like the first hour. And also like, you've been in a queue waiting for me for like two hours. You, you're basically yeah. going up a, a roller coaster that hasn't had the drop yeah, yet. The like, it sucks. Replaying exactly. all the things they're going to say to you in the head. Oh yeah. Get so up many there of them queue up and they'll, yeah, yeah. So many of them queue up and they'll have like a bit pre-planned in their head and it just, they, they can't actually say it when they get to me. If they get up and they say their name Poor backwards fuckers. or something, right? Mm. Yeah. Hi, I'm Pyro. Oh no, I mean I'm Peter. You know, I, I'll just quickly add. I, I do like doing the meet and greets though, because it is like it, it's almost like therapy for me. It sounds really retarded, but it's like you know, you get to you get all these numbers of like subscribers on your screen, but eventually you just don't care anymore. But then when you actually get to see them in person, it's like holy shit, they're actually real people. It's a real human That's behind lit. that number. That's when you lit. ask them what their name is, like how often do they say that they're your name because they're so nervous? Oh uh, no, nah, no one's actually done that. No one's had that? Okay. You probably don't have uh, time to ask the name anyway. Some of them, it's, <laughs> you'll get you'll get different types. Some of them literally will just want the post to sign, get a picture and then leave, but it's usually because they're so anxious. And then some of them will kind of just, you know, lock up and just kind of look at you. And then, you know, I'll have to ask them something like, you know, like, how's your day been? You know, how you been? You know, just to kind of initiate a conversation to get the ball rolling a little bit. Yeah. 
Which is I've fun, seen that before you know. in person, whether it's like I, talking to... I feel to... bad for them, eh? Because it's like they'll queue up for two and a half hours and then they just, you know, say hi and then leave. And it's like, dude, like, I, I'd fucking neck it if that was me. Like, that sucks. By the, the way, why are you biting your lip oh, in the sh- every The shitty picture. Riz face? Because, okay, so th- th- there is a method behind it. I look awful in all these photos, but th- the reason why I did it is because I'm smiling to them when I talk to them all the time. And it's one person after another, one person after another. If I then need to smile in the photos, it's too I'm going to have like looking. a fucking... I'm, my it's mouth is going to twitch. I'm going to look like a fucking psycho. So so me taking yeah. that picture is actually the only time I get to rest my face. <laughs> <laughs> what was the Down. face you did last meetup? You had a different face you went on. Uh, so, the soy point. The soy soy point. That is 100% That's true. Right. Yeah, like, like, anyone can relate time. to this. Anyone can relate to this. If you've ever been posing for a photo and someone goes, let me just take another one to be safe. Actually, let me just take a third one. I think that one messed up. By the yeah. third picture, you, you are pulling crazy face like you're too intense yeah. it's never the best picture yeah, i mean i always just gonna choose a face I, and go when i take it. the picture as well i noticed i always say to them now like like just have a look and make sure none of them are like blurry because i've i i felt really bad because like last insomnia i'd take selfies for people but then the photos would end up blurry and it's like you actual poor bastard you queued up for two hours and then you just get like a fucking scp just just blurry image it's just dog shit I think you settled on a good face because what a lot of people do to avoid smiling, you know, they panic in the moment of like, say cheese, they do the duck face, right? Where they like purse their lips together. The snipe, the sniper wolf face, yeah. And at least you're not doing that. Yeah, I don't know what I'll do next one. I just can't smile in the pictures because like my fucking mouth will hurt. It's the only time I get to rest my face. If you end up taking a picture with someone who it ends up being a problem for some reason, you know, they do something really bad and they're like, oh, look, Pyro took this picture. You're not just smiling, though. You are looking like you are really kind of riz, I like how you're calling you think it, on that level of, like, 8D chess, like, what could happen later. I'm just like, dude, I gotta rest my fucking face. <laughs> shitty, shitty little riz face. Well, no, it happens. You know, like, someone will try to trap you. Like, it happened to Jordan Peterson. This is part of why people think he's far right. It's why they started down that path, is someone came and unfurled a flag with Pepe <laughs> the Frog on it. And, and they were like, look, it's proof that he's a if racist. You, if you look at some of those pictures that Ryan posted as well, we had to cut off the meet and greet line so I could see everyone before I went on a break. So some of the pictures, it looks like I completely fell off and one person turned up, which is good. I'm amazed my subreddit didn't latch onto that. It's like, yeah, you really oh, fell off. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I could, this is a lot of people that came in person to, to see you and say a meme to you. Oh, this one's to me. What's your favorite book? Brackets. I know it's probably Huckleberry Finn. Well, it's not. <laughs> Something you read in English class. It's a good book, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is the well, the favorite series is First Law series by Joe Abercrombie. Oh, you don't read those, right? You listen to audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks, but yeah, same thing. Yeah, I've been listening uh, to that Three Body Problem audiobook. It actually makes no sense. Just can't. It's Chinese. That's why. Yeah, I think I think it was uh, I think it was Oliver that actually shields audible to me, but that was a fucking great shout. Can you talk about how babies are made? My parents won't tell me. Uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oldest, to be honest, member. Babies are made when you when <laughs> honestly when babies are made when you pick someone me. up and you rub them between your sweaty moobs, Be- belch in their mouth, belch in their mouth, and then the, the stalk. End flies in their mouth. And then the storm but, yeah. flies in <laughs> Yeah. Instead of the birds and the bees, it's just the, the belch and the brap. Pyro called Kanye Playboy Carty. Is he racist? <laughs> this is a question. All oh, right. Way. So it's, I, in my- because he okay, only this, listens to Blade. Th- this comes back to the TikTok Riz party. So in the TikTok Riz <laughs> party circle. video, they were listening to a song called Carnival. And I've heard of it. I didn't know who sung it. I just typed it in and I saw Playboy yeah. Carty on the it's list. It's a slob even though channel. He's... You don't do research. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's like, even though <laughs> even though he's a feature, he doesn't even like you know. He's basically not in the song at all. Oh, he it's, mumbles. It's Kanye... just... Yeah, yeah. It's Kanye's <laughs> song, but I said Playboy, and then people interpreted that as me not wanting to associate with Kanye or like me just being racist. It's like <laughs> as no, if I you, just saw... like not that like, Playboy Carty is much better. He like beat his ex partners and is a deadbeat dad. Oh, I was more <laughs> thinking of the whole. I was thinking of. Like, he was in my head, because when I saw the title, I just thought the Ed and Ross stream, where he yeah. just turns up, takes a bag of money, and then leaves. Opinion on the meat lizard situation. <laughs> the what? fuck does that it's mean? Not, okay, it's so, not a so situation. They, they, there is a situation. You don't There's even a huge need one. to explain it, Niall. There's just a huge one. Let, leave it. Da, 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 yeah, it needs da, an eight-minute and one-second-long explanation about what, what a meat is lizard this? is. 
They're, they're, they're posting this lizard it's that's just red, a, and it looks yeah. like it's it, it looks like it's made out of meat. And yeah. I just replied to it saying, "Imagine the protein," and they've just been posting it ever since. Like, it, it does just, look like you chop it up it. and put it on it's a pizza. It's in episode twenty-eight. Like it, it does looks, look like it's made out of it, meat, but there's no salami. situation. It's just a forced. You could put that on a, a Domino's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> forced meme. Do you guys like or hate Bluey? Who's Louie? Louie? It's a cartoon. It's a sh uh, show for toddlers that, for some reason, yeah. middle-aged white women watch. Why? Uh, my, my girlfriend watches it Eda, sometimes. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I mean, she fits the criteria. It's, like, Literally it's, a, woman. it's a show for toddlers, yeah. but it's, like, oddly deep for a show meant for children. But it's still a fucking kid's show. Just watch yeah. something else. <laughs> I mean, she she but, fits the criteria. Just woman and fairy. So cod cod Louis like Louis C K. No, no, Bluey. Bluey. Oh, just like some dog. some fucking dog, some fucking dogs. Would you consider ever bringing some of the more well-behaved patrons on as a guest? No, you no. narcissist. All of the active people in Discord are narcissists. Everyone's a narcissist. That 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 is insane. That five dollars lets them think they get to become a guest. That is, I would the, say, the like, is crazy for a Patreon episode. It could be funny for a complete shit show. You know, say like say all three of you are busy, and then I just do a a solo Patreon episode where I interview the patrons, and it's the worst fucking thing you've ever heard. Someone asked why are you gay, and Colossal maggoted them and said, "I will be doxing you." <laughs> Oh, I did, I did dox him. His name is Arthur Wiggins or some shit. What? I'm laughing, I'm laughing at how quickly you did it and the fucking surname. That's, that's a good name. Full of dresses and everything. Did you post it in chat? I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my said, Discord name on the you. server. I'm gonna change my nickname to Arthur Wiggins now. I'm just gonna at him and say hello, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really do this. I was joking, by the way. Is that actually his name? That's just literally the first name that came into my head. I thought, you might, have actually, I thought you might have actually put looked it up on Patreon. I love that when you. Re I like that when you reach for a name, like just randomly into the brain static. You know, your hand is going down into the mo into the sludge, and you pull out something. It's Arthur Wiggins, you're yeah, like that's yeah. that sounds like a character in like a Harry Potter knockoff or like, like a, a fantastical dead world. Sounds like a Deadwood <laughs> or a Red Dead Redemption name. If you said it to a cop, they would be like, "That's not your name," you know. Like it doesn't sound like a real person. I'm Arthur Wiggins. What's your name, Arthur Wiggins the Third? No, it isn't. We've heard enough about Pyrocynical's disgusting fetishes. I personally want to know what my favorite creator, Colossal, is crazy. Jerks off to every single night. <laughs> That's very normal question. Very normal question there. I remember when I was living with Chad that I floated him this idea, this lie, that I hadn't masturbated for the entirety of the time that I had been living with him. He immediately leaks it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did, I did it to see if he would leak it and then therefore find out if he was a trustworthy person or not. He failed this test pretty miserably, I would say, because I waited to see if this information would be made public. Sure enough. Or someone would relay this information back to me and ask me this question. Why have you so jacked who off? Sa who said that to you, though? I can't remember who said it may have God. been Max Didn't or it may fail? have been Scott or... I swear he failed it like an hour... Like, you told him, and I swear he told- Like, I, I swear we were in person. Like, I'm pretty sure it was the next day. Like, yeah. <laughs> after you told him. Because I, I, I remember asking you, is that real? I was proud that you said I passed the test, that you also pa that you also tested me and I passed I can't it. remember the question that I asked you, but I remember you did pass, yeah. What, what does actually happen if you don't jack off for a year? Do you just ascend? You come in your sleep. You, yeah. You explode. Yeah. Nocturnal emission. And also it's bad start, for your prostate. Do you start like nothing you in your cancer. sleep? Is that true? Yes. Well, the, yeah. yeah, it's well, that's the fucking wet dream. I, I know that you see have. all that like no fap stuff on Reddit from like actual like gooners. Your body will betray you and you will come in your sleep. Yeah. Which is good because otherwise you you'll start to like atrophy and you could get <laughs> you could explode. also get um uh you could also get prostate cancer from that. Like a doctor will tell you that you need to periodically like drain is that actually true you can get cancer from yeah not you can nothing? get issues from not 
now too. Yeah, yeah. True. I have a few hopefully decent questions that don't get lost into the abyss. This should probably be the last sip, right? If you could bring back one YouTuber or content creator back to the prime slash peak, who would you want and why? That's colossal, the first question. Colossal trolling videos. Definitely filthy Frank. Yeah, I was going to say, that's filthy oh, Frank. Yeah. Yeah. the most obvious answer. Yeah. Not that it would survive in the landscape, but... Then individual questions. Dolan, cat update and your cat's favorite activity. I meant, I added a cat, I added two cat references to the last video. Did you pick up on them, Dolan? I don't know if I did. <laughs> Didn't trigger just your toxoplasmosis. Li just li listening for the word cat. Okay. Just, well, it's just cat. You hear it constantly in your mind. Like cat, 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 cat. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Someone says cat to you. Just, you're just like, what, what else is new? You're breathing. That's fine. Meow, 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 meow. No, I said in the video, uh, I said in the video um, that if you, when you, once you learn about, about narcissistic personality disorder, it might remind you of a difficult coworker or a cat that you grew up with. I said. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I do remember now that you say that. And then I, and I dressed as a cat boy uh, to gloat about beating Sniper Wolf. I've noticed, I'm going through my messages with a J in a group chat and the only three things guaranteed from him is posting that he's up on crypto betting true his cat true and then telling me a show i really enjoyed was mid true no i'm pretty sure i tell you to kill yourself daily true also true i love that so number one this this is a big reveal so jay is based and loves crypto so <laughs> suck it audience and then two uh jay actually doesn't post cats when he's talking to normal people who are his no, friends he does no, he, does no he doesn't. He oh, never post, does that in the TV server. Cat. He bloody does. Almost never. That's not a normal way you relate to people. You are not posting pictures of your cat in there. He does. No. <laughs> the cat Someone was, it, yeah, people would be like, fucking uh, nerd must be autistic that he hates cats. It's like, no, you're autistic for posting. Can we not talk about the fucking cats? <laughs> <laughs> You said it's a cat podcast, so now it's a cat podcast, Colossal. If you jack your dick to Baby Yoda, are you technically a pedophile? <laughs> we did a whole show about this, really. Did we talk yeah. about it? I didn't make the didn't cut. Make it uh, wait, is this... <laughs> did, we, it. did we talk about it because this person is asking the same question, or did it just come up naturally? Oh, it was my question. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? No one asked this. You just, you just asked it to us. If you would like to ask questions of your own and have us answer them, you must needs join the Patreon, $5 a month. Enter our exclusive Discord server. No, don't go there. A wonderful place. Nerd doesn't like it. Use you Patreon can post as many it. cat gifts as you like, all the time, <laughs> if you so choose. That's true. Dolan Dark plays Fall Guys, while I play oh, there yeah. sometimes as well. Fall Guys, we do streaming parties. At we least play weekly poker. gaming sessions. Uh, Pyro sometimes streams some games there as well, usually with his mic off, but he does do it. I've, I've got to do a... I've, I promised someone on the server, which I shouldn't have, that I was going to do a 1v1 on Fall Guys with him. <laughs> uh, and I said I was going to stream it as well, so what's going to... Oh yeah, that's right. I basically said to him, if you win, uh, I'll give you a unique role on the server. But then if give you... You shouldn't have promised that. But then if you lose, uh, you need to face reveal. And he said he's down. The problem is I'm going to stream it. So what's going to happen is every single person that Everyone joins... Will grab just, you. They're just yeah. going to start grabbing. Yep, yeah, they're just going to start <laughs> grabbing me. The toucher gets touched. <laughs> <laughs>